Welcome to the Chronicles of Iris 101 Part 4. Today I want to talk about Lancethir, one of the key tragic figures of Iris and an important part of the realm's recent history. Lancethir, son of Halmanir, was the last living descendant of the oldest bloodline of Erosiran kings. He was the rightful heir to the throne of the human kingdoms. Nearly 60 years ago, the realm fell under assault by the witch lord Olhagen, a necromancer who sought to fulfill the Volgrak's legacy of darkness. Lancethir was charged with defeating the witch lord at the seat of his power in the east, and he did so with the help of a brave band of heroes, some of which still play an active part in the realm today. Despite this victory, the human city of Irulan had been sacked by the Witch Lord's foul minions. Lancethir took charge, leading a huge procession of refugees, human and demi-human alike, far to the south, where at an ancient shrine to the old gods, he erected a new city, the capital of Taldorius, the greatest city in the history of Iris. For a time, the hero ruled in peace and fellowship, until the troubles began. Many years into Lancethir's reign, ominous happenings started to befall the southern provinces. Joyless centurions wearing strange armor began to patrol the city streets, and citizens started to vanish from the day-to-day -day life of the kingdom. At first, the disappearances were easily ignored, until one fateful day, on the very anniversary of the Witch Lord's defeat, Lancethir appeared on the banister of the palace to deliver his Edict of Steel. It was a royal decree banishing all magic and magical folk alike from the realm under the pretense that magic itself was the cause of the Witch Lord's rise and the source of the misery that had befallen Iris in years past. Over the next few years, Lancethir, once a beloved hero of the realm, became a tyrant, unleashing his imperators to round up mystical folk from across the provinces. Magic was on the verge of being snuffed out forever, but all was not lost. An underground resistance calling themselves the Watchers of the Wild vowed to protect innocence from Lancethir's dominion, and they struck from the shadows, greatly hindering the Empire's activities. Eventually, the Watchers uncovered the source of the corruption. It was none other than the Witch Lord himself, who must have corrupted Lancethir to some horrible end at his defeat six decades earlier. The Witch Lord had been siphoning magical folk of their essence in order to empower the great Thunderblade Danturiel, the ancestral sword which only Lancethir could wield. Using Lancethir as a pawn, the Witch Lord would brandish Danturiel to resurrect the Dragon of Darkness and spell doom for the entire world. The Watchers of the Wild confronted Lancethir and the Witch Lord at the Ruin of Five Skulls, a desolate place far to the north. They defeated the corrupt king, but before he fell, he thrust the sword into the mountainside, awakening the Dragon of Darkness once more to terrorize the continent. But that is a story for another day. Today, Lancethir is remembered as both a hero and a tyrant, and his tragedy is the stuff of legend. Unfortunately, many of his human followers in the Northern Lands still uphold Lancethir's damnable Edict of Steel, not realizing or caring that it was an edict spawned only from the Witch Lord's evil. Thanks for tuning in to the Chronicles of Iris Part 4. I'll be back soon with another video, but until then, we appreciate all of your support.